Okay, here we are, a new series that we're uh, beginning uh, today entitled uh, Stress Busters. Uh, the lesson that we're going to be uh, doing now is um, entitled An Introduction to the Problem of Stress. And uh, before I uh, begin the uh, class, I want to mention, I want to give a, a shout out uh, for this little book here uh, that uh, I used for uh, this uh, series. It's actually a, a, a book that belongs to a, uh, an entire series of books used for small groups. And uh, really I can recommend it. It's called Stressed Out, Keeping It Together uh, When Life is Falling Apart. I checked online to make sure that it was still available and it and all the other books in the series seem to be available on Amazon. So if you want more information or if you'd like to get some great um, resource uh, uh, books for a small group discussion, I can highly uh, recommend uh, this particular book. All right, so let's get on to our uh, lesson, uh, our topic, if you wish, for the next couple of lessons, uh, the problem of stress. Uh, before uh, we begin discussing the subject of stress, I, I want you to understand the perspective that I'm taking with this particular uh, problem. Uh, as a minister, uh, I'm often asked, why do uh, Christians or people of faith in God, uh, people who believe in Jesus, why do they experience uh, stress? Uh, and why do Christians burn out? I mean, after all, they're Christians, they have faith, they're going to heaven, you know, why, why, why should they burn out? Uh, after all, uh, shouldn't, their, uh, shouldn't their faith uh, be a guardian against uh, this type of, uh, of problem? And so uh, my approach uh, to this topic is to discuss the problem of stress and how it affects the person of faith, the believer, uh, uh, the Christian. And for this reason, I'll be looking at uh, passages and teachings uh, from the Bible uh, that will guide us in our study on this particular uh, topic. But having said this, I also say that stress affects believers and non-believers alike, and the solutions are similar, whether you are a faithful, uh, church-going uh, Christian, or you're a person that has uh, very little interest uh, in religion. Uh, both individuals um, uh, experience stress and the solutions are very similar for, uh, for both uh, people. Uh, I believe, uh, first of all, that everyone can benefit uh, from these uh, sessions, regardless of their level of faith, uh, because everyone is subject to stress in, uh, in one way or another. Which brings me to my first point when it comes to understanding stress. There's, um, there's this idea uh, that says that stress is associated exclusively with the modern times, you know, with, with the modern lifestyle. You know, the businessman or the businesswoman who is uh, busy with their workload, they're extremely active, they're very stressed out. Uh, and people perhaps who, who live in the country or those who operate small shops or boutiques, you know, well, they're relaxed, uh, there's no worry, there's no stress in their life. And a good example of how unrealistic this is comes actually from my own family. Uh, I remember as a kid, my uncle uh, Morris uh, owned a bike shop. Uh, they rented bikes and they also repaired uh, bicycles. And I remember as a kid going in there, always fascinated by all the bikes in his shop and watching him in the back. And uh, he owned the building you know, where, the, uh, where the shop was and he lived upstairs as a complete uh, apartment upstairs. And uh, he'd go up you know, for lunch and uh, have lunch and sometimes take a nap, you know, lock the shop up. And then after about two o'clock in the afternoon, he'd go back downstairs and do some work. I thought, what, a, what an ideal life. Uh, there must be no stress uh, involved with that kind of life. And as I grew up, I began to realize that my uncle Morris had five kids to feed. And uh, he uh, explained to me uh, how sometimes the repairs that he undertook on these bikes took longer and cost more money than he had quoted uh, at the beginning. Uh, he talked about angry customers uh, who didn't get their bikes on time or uh, people who would actually steal uh, you know, uh, merchandise in the store while he was in the back uh, repairing the bike. 
And, and, and he would tell me that uh, it was a very stressful life. And here I was uh, as a kid thinking that, why, if you wanted just a, a life with no stress, a relaxed life, all you had to do was open a, a bike store. Well, my uncle, uh, my uncle explained that uh, the truth was quite opposite from what I, I thought. Um, another idea is uh, you know, the naivety of people in the city who think, for example, that farmers, uh, they have no stress. Uh, they live close uh, to the earth. Uh, you, know, you drive by in the country, it's so peaceful, so beautiful, the rolling hills, the farmhouse, the barns, you know, the cattle, uh, leisurely strolling. You know, we think that you know, I ought to give up my, stress, uh, my stressful life in the city and move and, and do some farming. Well, those people who think that have probably never experienced uh, the hail uh, killing uh, a farmer's crops or, 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 or a cow stepping on your foot. That happened to me once and it's very painful. Uh, uh, or, or perhaps uh, uh, their tractor uh, breaking down just uh, at the time of uh, harvest, or perhaps the bank is stopping their line of credit uh, in the middle uh, of, of, of the year uh, when uh, farmers uh, need the money uh, the most. And so behind this serene facade uh, of cows you know, grazing and corn growing, uh, there's stress, uh, lots of stress in being uh, a farmer. And so it goes for everyone uh, who is alive. Uh, moms who are stressed out at home, uh, college students who are stressed out at school, who have exams and all kinds of things going on at college, uh, the elderly uh, coping with the stress of aging, uh, the young who have to deal with the stress uh, of coming into adulthood, uh, men and women uh, feeling the pressure to succeed, to provide, to maintain, uh, to survive. Uh, young people who want to meet someone, seeking a, a life partner. Uh, all of these things uh, in ordinary life uh, causes stress. And so truth number one for all of us is that everybody, regardless of age or sex or social position, experiences stress in one way or another. And so let's get some, you know, some facts uh, about the idea of stress. First of all, stress uh, is not a, a bad thing. You know, I'm talking about stress as if it were a bad thing, but it really isn't. I'm just saying that everyone experiences stress in one way or uh, another. But stress all by itself is, is not a bad thing. It's, it's natural. It's merely the body's chemical and psychological response to stimulus enabling the body to deal with a various situation in life. Uh, you know, it's very natural to kind of get pumped up uh, for the game. Well, that's a kind of controlled stress or uh, 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 the stress in anticipation or preparation uh, for company, for example, uh, or for visitors. Uh, stress is needed to uh, have mental alertness uh, when you have exams or a complex work, uh, work, when you need to focus, uh, it, it, it's, it's the body stress that kind of elevates your, uh, your attention uh, when you need it uh, to do uh, certain uh, tasks. Uh, a certain mindset uh, that focuses our energy you know, to get the job done uh, despite obstacles. So we need stress because stress is something that serves the body uh, when it is challenged. Uh, so we've been designed by God to function under stress, even function uh, more efficiently when stress is created uh, by the situation at hand. Now, stress is a kind of a catchword for all of those things that come together in us uh, mentally and physically and spiritually in order to kind of turn up you know, the level of awareness and efficiency and energy in dealing with the various concerns in our everyday lives. Now, the problem, the problem occurs when this level is turned up too high for too long. Then stress turns into chronic stress and burnout, which is harmful uh, to the uh, individuals. Some uh, symptoms of overstress, 
uh, which uh, leads to burnout. Things like fatigue and exhaustion, insomnia, various, uh, various physical pains like stomach upsets and headaches, muscle aches, chest pains, high palpitations, high blood pressure. And even there are some emotional uh, and spiritual symptoms of overstress, uh, uh, being irritable, uh, 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 anxiety, depression, uh, excessive anger, uh, a feeling of isolation or cynicism or bitterness. You know, based on uh, uh, some material uh, samples, uh, it is estimated that 50 to $70 billion uh, a year are lost in uh, businesses due to stress-related uh, illnesses. And overstress is one of the major contributors uh, to heart disease and cancer and lung ailments and accidental injuries and cirrhosis of the liver, suicide, also Parkinson's uh, disease. Uh, medical profession tells us that two thirds of office visits to doctors are prompted by stress related symptoms. And so the key of course, is not to eliminate stress altogether, because as I've said before, stress has a very important function in our life. The key is to reduce the intensity and the frequency of overstress. Uh, you know, if you have a, if you have a soundboard, uh, when you have a soundboard, you have these little dials, right? And in these little dials, you have meters, you know, and uh, you have uh, yellow and green and red, and red means that the sound is too loud, too sharp. And the, the, the sound engineer usually uh, is uh, handling the soundboard to make sure that those needles don't go or stay in the red, you know, to turn things down. Well, it's a little bit like that. Uh, we have overstress that leads to burnout when those needles are always in the overstress position. Uh, sometimes, we, you know, sometimes we need some overstress to get us going and to focus the mind, but when those needles are in the overstress position for too long, it becomes uh, debilitating. So stress, you know, it doesn't happen all by itself. Uh, it's a response or it's a reaction to what is happening to us. Uh, it's a preparatory stimulus uh, to enable us to act and to think. Uh, people, however, who are overstressed for no reason at all are folks who suffer from uh, something called anxiety disorder or a more common uh, title or term is uh, panic attacks. Now panic attacks have all the symptoms of stress overload, uh, a heart beating faster, various physical and emotional symptoms of over, over, over stress and burnout, but there is no correlated reason for the symptoms. You understand what I'm saying? In other words, you have all the symptoms of burnout, but you don't have any of the reasons for burnout. Uh, most uh, people will work too hard for too long. Uh, they may suffer business ruin and family problems and begin to show signs of burnout from overstress brought on uh, by the things that are actually happening in their life. And that is you know, a legitimate thing. In other words, too much overstress for too long will lead to a burnout of some, of some kind. However, another person may be going along just fine without any particular problems or overstress situation, and then suddenly will feel all of the same symptoms of burnout and feel these even more acutely to the point where they will be incapacitated by the symptoms for a time. This, this is called a panic attack. It's anxiety disorder. It's not the same as burnout. And I think a lot of us uh, know people, people even in our families that suffer uh, from anxiety uh, disorder. They have all the symptoms of burnout, they have all the symptoms of overstress, but uh, their uh, symptoms are not caused uh, by overstress. Uh, a panic attack is caused by an imbalance in the chemical composition of the body. Uh, it has all of the same symptoms as burnout, 
uh, but the reason for it is not your lifestyle, but rather the way that your body processes the chemicals within it. Uh, some say the hypothalamus uh, secretes too much adrenaline uh, at any given time, and that's what provokes the uh, panic attack. Um, we don't know why that is, it, it, just, it just is. We don't know why it does that, but uh, that seems to be uh, what happens. Now, burnout, however, um, uh, that happens when a person is stressed out for way too long or too intensely for too many things. Remember the needle I talked about in this little uh, diagram here, the, the, uh, the graph on the left, uh, your stress you know, goes from low to medium to high. Sometimes you touch the red when there's a lot of things going on and then goes back down to medium you know, when the crisis is over. That's normal. But in the diagram on the, on the right, in that, uh, you know, that needle, that graph there, uh, that arrow is always in the red. It never gets out of the red. A person is overstressed all the time for all things. Well, when that needle stays in that position for too long, then the next step or the result is what we commonly refer to as uh, burnout. Now, burnout from overstress, however, requires several things in order to find rehabilitation. Hmm. It's easy to say, well, just don't feel that way. You, you, you can't tell a person who's suffering from burnout, you can't tell them, you know, well, I just have to relax. Well, it's not as easy as that. There's some things that, you know, an individual has to do in order uh, to come back. Uh, from burnout in order to get that needle out of the, uh, out of the red. So here are a couple of things uh, for those uh, who have gone beyond you know, overstress and have gone into the burnout situation. Well, one thing we need in that uh, situation is knowledge. A person has to understand what it is that they are doing and how it is affecting them emotionally and physically. They have to accept, hey, I'm in this burnout situation and there are things that I am doing uh, that, are causing, uh, that are causing this. Usually burnout victims repeat and reinforce their lifestyle as a means of dealing with their problems. For example, workaholics will work twice as hard to make the extra money they need to take a vacation so that they can relax. <laughs> Their solution is, you know, I'm burned out, I'm burned out, I, I need to relax, so what am I going to do? Well, I'm just going to put in and, and work a lot of overtime and just work on Saturday and work on Sunday, you know, for a couple of months to save up some money and then I'll relax. It, it, it's easy to kind of smile at that solution, but a lot of times this is the, this is the answer that they come up with. They make it worse. Or people who are stressed out because uh, they've suffered uh, the loss of a loved one, will isolate themselves in order to deal with the pain and stress. But this type of action usually makes matters worse instead of better. And it's almost a kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's like a natural human tendency, you know, especially in, in the loss of a loved one. You know, we, tend to, we tend to pull back. Uh, a lot of people, they, they just want to go into a corner you know, and hide. They don't want to see anybody. They don't want to talk about anybody. This is the way that they're going to handle the stress and the pain and the burnout that comes with this kind of, uh, with this kind of uh, blow uh, to their lives. And it's exactly the opposite of what they actually need. What they need is to come out into the light. What they need is to come to be with other people to receive some of the comfort and encouragement and strength that they, that they can find uh, in, in relationships and in interactions with other people. But many times they choose to do the exact opposite, which aggravates uh, the condition that they have. So we need to understand ourselves. You know, step one, if you're in that position, burnout position, for whatever reason, uh, we need to understand ourselves and we need to understand and accept what it is that we're doing to ourselves that are causing these, uh, this problem. Another thing, another kind of prescription for burnout, 
um, there needs to be change. Uh, understanding what we do that causes stress and burnout and how it affects us, uh, this is important, but it's incomplete in the healing process unless we change. Unless we change, there's no healing. There's no pulling back from that red zone. Knowledge will help diagnose the problem, but it's change uh, that is the medicine uh, that will help the problem uh, go away. Uh, burnout is the result of our loading system, uh, pushing it beyond uh, its ability. We overload our system rather. Uh, we make it do things that it, it can't do. We go beyond what we're physically and emotionally capable of. And so many times it's due to a failure to recognize that God has placed some physical or financial or emotional limit on us. And, and we refuse to accept these limits. You know, each person has a different limit. But when we surpass these, when we go past these limits, especially for an extended amount of time, uh, eventually something, you know, something's got to give. And usually what gives is, is us, is our ability to cope, is our ability to be able to uh, maintain a, a balanced uh, emotional state. Uh, the change necessary is not a change to become something different, but rather returning to a more realistic version of what and who we are. You know, we burn out many times because we try to go beyond the limits of who and what we are. And the answer is to accept what our limits are. Just simply accept and say, you know what? I'd like to go this far and I want to go this far and I think I need to go this far, but I recognize that I can only go this far. I only have this to give and I can't give anymore and I can't go any further than that without damaging myself. And then aside from knowledge and change, faith is required. Faith is required. Insight into the problem and a change to live more within the confines of who we are helps those who merely live in and for this world that exists here with some level of satisfaction. However, for those who are disciples of Jesus and uh, experience burnout, a faith adjustment is also required since the road to burnout has usually been caused by or resulted in a damaged faith. Nobody who is a believer who has experienced burnout has done so without damaging their faith in one way or uh, another. I want to read a, a passage of scripture here in Mark chapter nine, uh, a story of a, a father who experienced this burnout that we're talking about. We pick it up in verse 14. It says, when they came back to the disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and some scribes arguing with them. Immediately, when the entire crowd saw him, meaning saw Jesus, they were amazed and began running up to, uh, to greet him. And he asked them, what are you discussing with them? And one of the crowd answered him, teacher, I brought you my son possessed with a spirit which makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it slams him to the ground and he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and stiffens out. I told your disciples to cast it out and they could not do it. And he answered them and said, oh, unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. And so they brought the boy to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit threw him into a convulsion and falling uh, to the ground, he began rolling around and uh, uh, foaming at the mouth. And he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood, it has often thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the boy's father cried out and said, I do believe, help my unbelief. 
When Jesus saw that a crowd was rapidly gathering, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, you deaf and mute spirit, I command you, come out of him and do not enter him again. After crying out and throwing him into a terrible convulsions, it came out and the boy became so much like a corpse that most of them said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and raised him and he got up. When he came into the house, his disciples began questioning him privately. Why could we not drive it out? And he said to them, this kind cannot come out by anything but prayer. So note here, the father uh, is stressed to the max because uh, of a lifetime of, of worry and anguish and fear over a son who is, it seems, hopelessly tormented by a demon. And I mean, you know, if you, if, you, if you looked at the story, it wasn't just that the demon possessed him, it says it would try to throw him into the fire or try to throw him into the water. The demon was trying to kill him. Now, it wasn't just possessing him and making him do you know, odd things. It was trying to actually kill his child. And so the father, you know, he cries out, he says, I do believe, I do believe. But then he says, help my unbelief. You know, not only was the boy sick, but the father was burned out as well. And one of the signs was the faith that was beginning to sag, you know, and he said it himself, I, I do believe, but boy, you know, you've got to help me here because I'm, I'm having trouble with my, with my faith. And so for the Christian, there's no healing without a renewal of faith. For the unbeliever, there is no total healing without a recognition that Jesus is one's Lord and, and Savior. Well, in the end, burnout is largely due to man's ongoing effort to save himself or to care for himself without reference uh, to God. You know, we all experience stress and the key is to manage that stress and be aware of when we are overstressed. You know, we need to kind of be thinking uh, about those graphs, you know, those meters. And when we, uh, you know, when we begin to sense that we're starting to be in the red, this is the time to pull back. This is the time to do something about uh, our condition. When we can uh, uh, pinpoint the times and the occasions for this overstress that we suffer, we are better equipped to lessen the intensity and the frequency of this situation. Remember that the key is not getting rid of all stress. The key is to lessen the frequency and the intensity of over stress. All right, well, in our, in our next uh, session, we're going to be focusing on particular types of stressors in our lives and how to be able to effectively deal with these. An example, for example, we'll talk about stress from worry or stress from work or failure or stress from loss. And then finally, a story of one Bible character who suffered from burnout and how God personally ministered to this man's uh, burnout. For now, I'd like to uh, leave you uh, with a stress vulnerability scale so you can uh, evaluate in a kind of a general way your own stress level. And that's part of the bonus material uh, online that we have. Of course, there's the video that we're doing here, but you'll note that there's a study sheet that you can download uh, and print out to uh, work with. And there will also be, for this particular uh, lesson, the uh, stress uh, vulnerability scale that you can also download and just follow the instructions and it'll give you a score. Uh, to, kind of, uh, you know, to kind of give you an idea of where you're at. You know, in other words, those needles, where are you at? You know, medium, uh, are you in the red zone? Uh, a bit of a reflection about your own stress uh, character. All right, so that's it for our first session in the Stress Buster series. We'll come back with the, uh, with the next one uh, soon. And uh, we look forward to having you with us for that. Thank you and uh, God bless you.